party um, that has ever taken place here in Paris, in France. I'm going to give a little introduction to biohacking and what we are doing in Sweden and what's the whole thing with these uh, chip implants. And uh, then we'll have some live implanting thanks to uh, uh, well-known uh, Sebastian, uh, also known as Urb, uh, piercer from Paris. He knows his stuff. I think is that biohacking is, I mean, hacking is not uh, necessarily something bad. When you hear about a hacker, is it someone that breaks into a system to steal data or money? We don't see hacking that way. Hacking for us is just experimenting. And to experiment specifically with biological beings. It can be anything from bacteria all the way to homo sapiens. But we have people who are classic lab rats who like to uh, tinker with uh, test tubes and uh, uh, hardcore lab equipment. But we also have people who are very interested in quantified self. I'm sure a lot of people uh, here knows what that is. Uh, is. Someone who doesn't know? Okay, you're too cool to, to show, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's about logging uh, personal data. Uh, you can do it with fitness wearables or uh, uh, and uh, also other things like uh, you can log your sleep with putting something under your mattress, for example, to understand what does it mean when I uh, have uh, too much coffee in the afternoon? How does that affect my sleep pattern? And you can actually get the right data instead of just feeling tired the day after. And then in our crowd also hangs out grinders and body modification uh, people. People who are, uh, this is a subculture that has existed for many years of people who actively modify their bodies. And uh, then we have body hackers, which in our definition, these are people who like to hack the performance of their bodies. And we are, in this category, we're very inspired by, for example, professional athletes on brain uh, electric uh, stimulation devices. This is a lot of fun. I mean, you can buy this online, but we think it's a lot more fun to build them ourselves uh, and accessible. That anybody can, in fact, build their own DNA register. You can sample your colleagues or your neighbors and uh, and you can see who is not washing up the coffee cups in the office. Invite other people to ha participate in discussion. Is this right or wrong? And often it comes down to, well, whatever it is, it's doable. So we need to deal with it. This is really just a badge that you put in the body. The technology is not more complex than that. And in fact, we've been putting exactly these kind of things into animals in an industrial scale for the last 25 years. I'd like to say that our human brains, they are not sort of adapted to remember pin codes. This is my hand, and this is what I've done in the last six months to use uh, my hand for, to integrate the public encryption key into the business card, so that whenever I share my contact details with someone, I also include my public encryption key, so that I can encrypt any information between this person and me, to be a simplification of the interface between humans and machines has proven, for example, that Disney now has completely resigned Disney World in Florida to use NFC technology for all the experiences. The needle, uh, the implant is going to go in between mm, the tissues and the skin. Here we go. <laughs> Here it's done. Big applause. There's also something that is going you know, going to become something real soon, where we'll be able to not only implant chips, but real organs that could have been upgraded uh, themselves. True. And what do you think about this, Remy? Is it, uh, is it the future for us that we will be exchanging uh, body parts uh, and, and organs? I How far away is this? Uh, I cannot say, I don't, I never predict because it's uh, always difficult to predict, especially for the future, as somebody said uh, <laughs> some time <laughs> ago. And, but uh, I think that, uh, in fact, uh, thi this kind of technology, I'm like Toma, I'm not sure right now that I want to be implanted, uh, probably because I am a coward too, but uh, uh <laughs> that I think that, uh, as Toma had said, it's a question of choice, in fact. It's not a question so much of skin. If uh, one day I can swallow my uh, nanobots uh, easily and expel them in a Japanese toilet a few hours after, this is not really important for me 
if, he, if it is inside me. I think that the, the big problem is how to stop it and how to use it. Um, I think that the, the, the fear of the skin, um, I'm not sure it's so important, in fact. Hmm? Nancy, do you, do you think the skin is a, a barrier uh, that a lot of people are unwilling to cross? Um, I don't know if I'm the best to answer the question because I already got lots of yeah, exactly. things implanted. You were so willing for to me, it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's about um, maybe the thing is that it's not just iron or whatsoever. It's more technological. I mean, it, the the fear is more on this because uh, everyone has piercings now. Um, but for me, yeah, the the question is is more about the choice. Um, if someday everyone gets an implant, and if some other people from another tr culture, I mean, uh, they don't have it, um, will they be rejected from our society if everyone works um, and uses it the same way? In, in fact, it touches the concept of individuality. You know, wh what is your body, what is yourself? So it's a question of ecosystem around you, what the tools you're using. You're already upgraded by all the tools you're using because it extends your abilities. It's taking place in, in the seed that grows. I mean, to use things effectively does not always require the absolute full understanding of what's going on underneath. I mean, we, we're used to dealing with things on, on. The whole point for us biohackers to do this is really because we want to explore this technology before the big corporates come and push these products on us. And I think we really feel that this is a little service to society. <laughs> Thank you.